If you were defining mindset or saying how to define mindset and what are examples of mindset, then you would say the mindset are beliefs, individual or collective, that are so embedded within your mind that they impact and influence how you live. Easier way to think about it is just culture. Terrace McKenna said culture is your operating system. Borrowing from that, we would say that mindset is your operating system. Mindset is your software and your body is your hardware, but because they're interacting, this is always going to change. An example of mindset would be, do we live, and this is a fundamental one, it's a basic one, is do we live in a world of scarcity or do we live in one of abundance? If you believe that we live in a world where opportunities are limited, then you're not going to take chances. If you believe in a world where there are ample opportunities, actually more opportunities than you can think of, then you're going to, unconsciously, you're going to find more opportunities. Sometimes I wrap up these concepts in maybe terms that I shouldn't use, like the universe. And what I usually mean by that is the universe of your own mind is opening yourself up to the possibilities within your own mind. If you view the world as being one of limited opportunities, then you're going to be less creative. If you're going to view the world as one as limitless, then you're going to be more creative. That's why when people say, how do I be more creative? I say, well, change your mindset about the world. If you view the world as being full of possibility and limitless, then you're going to find more opportunity. And I mean, this is the case in everything we do. For example, just to be a little bit meta, I'm doing a video course. I've done books. I've done seminars. If I viewed, well, I just wrote a book. I'm just an author. Then I wouldn't be doing so many other things. I wouldn't have started a, a lifestyle company, right? But in my view, I think, well, I have now a book that people like. Those people probably want to come to events in real life, so why don't I just have those people come to events in real life? Oh, and a lot of people now want video courses, so video courses are a great way to deliver value to people. See, so it isn't even for me a struggle to come up with ideas. I actually have, I have more ideas than I know what to do with because I, I just view the world fundamentally as a good place where if you work hard enough and long enough, then you're probably going to get what you deserve or almost likely get what you deserve. But that's a mindset belief. The mindset belief is, if I work hard enough, long enough, and long enough is important. A lot of people, especially younger people, go, why? Well, I, I don't have everything I want, and I don't know my life purpose. And I think, well, how, how old are you? you know? well, I'm 19, and I don't know what my life purpose is. Like, man, I'm 40, and I don't know what my life purpose is. Uh, whoever told you you had to have a life purpose in, in the first place, right? But, but that in and of itself is a mindset belief. Well, I have to have a life purpose. And if I don't have a life purpose, then therefore I'm missing out on something. These are all mindset principles that are they're, they're baked in. The origins of the mindset are primarily your culture and the people closest to you. And there's multiple layers to this. And by layers, I mean this. Whenever I try to change a person's mind, which is why I no longer try to change minds, people get angry at me. They want to argue with me. And before, I would just, I quit arguing with people because I realized that these ideas aren't even yours. Why do you care about getting rid of them? You didn't come up with these ideas. Somebody you grew up with told you this. Some teacher did. Some doctor did. Some culture did. Some TV show did. You didn't wake up one day and realize that your life was terrible and the world was a bad place. You got that from somewhere. And then you want to argue with me and tell me why I'm wrong because you're running on an operating system that you didn't even create. People take their mindsets personally because they believe that their mindset is fixed. Well, wait a minute. What do you mean by that? Well, what I just did there was to illustrate a fixed mindset versus a flexible mindset. A fixed mindset would be, well, this is the way I was born. This is the situation I was in. This is who I am. That's just who I am. We hear this all the time, actually. Well, I don't do that because that's just not who I am or that's just, this is just the way it is going to be. Well, that's a mindset because you believe that Wherever you are today is where you're going to be tomorrow. And you believe that wherever you are today is because of what happened to you yesterday. And that has never been my mindset. My mindset has always been flexible, which is, hey, if I don't like where I am today, I just think I can change it. Maybe to a, a point that's actually delusional. And, and some people would say it is delusional. But then I would say, well, if I have a delusional self-belief in myself, 
Isn't that better than the alternative, which is not believing in myself? And people who don't believe in themselves probably got that from somewhere else. They probably got that from their parents. They're living a script that their parents wrote for them or their teachers wrote for them, or maybe they weren't put in challenges. So for me, one reason that I have a flexible mindset is because my childhood sucked. There's no way to spin it. I mean, I can spin into a Horatio Algero story and you know, it's always good to create rapport with people to talk about it. But as a kid, I was asthmatic, we grew up very poor. I never actually went further than an hour away from my house because the car might break down. One pair of jeans to last me an entire school year. But I've been all over the world, so I'm not here to, you know, whine about poverty, but I got bullied. So I had a, not a great childhood in that regard. But then I got into martial arts and I actually went to the gym. So I was able to actually change my environment and change myself because I grew up in a very uncomfortable situation. So what I've actually found is that people who are mediocre actually live nicer lives. They never got just smashed in the head and then had to overcome that and realize, okay, every day I'm gonna get beat up, smashed in the head, five kids are gonna surround me, or I'm just gonna start beating people up and then suddenly those people aren't, aren't gonna to wanna to be anywhere near me. So for me, I, I really didn't have a, a chance, you know, I'm not going to say, you know, get rich or die trying because I never, I never really wanted to be rich, but I did not want to be bullied. I did not want to be afraid. I did not want to be poor. I did not want to have to worry about a lot of things that I had to worry about as a kid. So for me, it's just almost like, well, duh. What do you mean you can't change? What do you mean that wherever you are is where you're going to be? But then again, as you talk to these people, they're usually people who they lived, uh, you know, more comfortable lives. They weren't ever put in challenging positions. And then their parents just told them the script. Follow rules, do what you're told. Don't take bold risks, right? So that mindset becomes, okay, well, I was born into a pretty decent situation. It's kind of comfortable. I'm going to listen to what everybody tells me. And then what they tell me is going to become my mindset. What happens is you passively adopt the programming, the cultural programming, the mindset programming of your parents who probably meant well, your teachers who probably meant well, your society which actually doesn't mean well, and you enter a new point in your life where you're not getting what you want, but then, then I say, well, when have you ever sat down and decided what you believe about the world? When did you ever sit down and decide what you wanted?